Sometimes when Christians are trying to convert non-Christians, the Christians bring up Pascal's wager. They seem to think it holds some significance in the discussion of belief in the God of the Bible. Well, let's just take a look at it and see if what they think is true. What is this philosophy, philosophy that uh, Blaise Pascal came up with? It's basically a gamble regarding the belief in the existence of the God of the Bible. The wager is actually somewhat complicated, but we'll simplify it here. Pascal thought that people can choose to believe or not to believe. Not only did he claim that we can cho choose belief if we so desire, but he also said that rational people should lead a life that is consistent with the existence of the God of the Bible. So what's the wager? Well, the reasoning, of course, is that if this God exists, then we lose only this life by worshiping him. Um, well, if he doesn't exist, we lose only this life. Um, you know, we don't get to do our will in this life, but we have to do the will of the God, uh, sacrificing some pleasures we might want to enjoy. But if the God does exist, then we gain far more. A life in heaven without the pain and suffering of the God's wicked hell. And does that sound good to you? Well, not so fast. First, we can't just choose to believe some. For instance, I can't believe donkeys can talk any more than I can believe that I'm six feet tall. I can't believe a God came down and had brunch with Moses and company. I simply cannot make myself believe these things. Well, not anymore anyway. I mean, I believed them. I didn't make myself believe them. I just believed them. But I woke up. That thought alone that we can simply choose to believe should cause eyebrows to raise because, as we all know, we cannot force ourselves to believe in gods other than Yahweh. So how can we force ourselves to believe in Yahweh? If I could do that, I could also choose to believe that Thor exists. Well, why don't we all do that? I like Thor better than I like Yahweh, and it's easy to choose to believe in Thor, right? Then we could all wear these little hammers around our necks and, and hang them on our walls. We can make a sign of the hammer on our body, too. Easy peasy, right? Yeah, we talk about how Thor lives in our hearts and how he's coming soon to take us to Valhalla. We could beg him to fill us up with his love. Thor found my keys the other day. They were under a couch cushion, but I know Thor made me look there. And you know what else? The hurricane didn't hit me. And I know for sure that's because Thor didn't allow it to. Sure, I live in landlocked Lexington, but who put me here, huh? Obviously Thor. He works everything out for my good. He's so awesome. He's good all the time. Now, I can't see him, but I know he's there. I mean, I feel him in my heart. Does any of this sound weird to you? Well, you know what? It sounds exactly the same way when we change Thor's name to Jesus. Now, this leads me to my second point. Yahweh is not, as we all know, the only God men have concocted. Anthropologists tell us that we have worshipped 18,000 gods. 18,000. How do you wager on all those gods? What if you believe in the wrong one? You know, what if you choose to believe in the wrong one? There's no more evidence for the existence of Yahweh than there is for any of these other 17,999 gods. So this crazy, crazy wager doesn't make sense. Third, let's just say that Yahweh is indeed the one true God we should put our faith in. Maybe we think he's the most likely candidate. Pascal thinks we should live as if he exists, whether he does or not. Just a case. So exactly how is that? How do you, how do you live? as if y'all exist. Oh, yeah, I know all the great morality of Christianity, right? Okay, well, to worship Yahweh as he requires, we have to approve of some really bad stuff. You know what I'm referring to? It's the biggies. I talk about them all the time. Child murder, chattel slavery, misogyny, human sacrifice. Those are some pretty atrocious behaviors. Christians have to endorse evil in order to be pleasing to the corrupt God of the Bible. So even if Yahweh is the true God, why would any good person want to serve him? He's evil and demands evil from his followers. In what bizarre world is that a good thing? 
In what bizarre world is it commendable to do evil in order to gain praise or a fancy mansion? In what bizarre world is it good to do evil that good may come? Who wants to live a life like that? Not good people, that's for sure. And as you can see, if Yahweh is not the one true God, then we spent this life being wicked and wasting our lives on top of it for nothing. And we leave a really bad legacy on the earth, whether Yahweh is real or not. So following him causes us to lose a lot more in this life than just giving up some fun activities. Besides all the wickedness we must endorse and pretend is good, we sometimes have to lose family members and friends when we worship the evil God of the Bible. We must shun some, condemn others. And, and in doing this, we destroy very important relationships. Again, all for nothing if we're wrong. So to believe in Yahweh and act as if he's the one true God, we must give up our integrity. We must give up our morality. We must be wicked by approving of the wicked behaviors of Yahweh. Fourth, if another God is the true God, maybe it sees our wicked worship of the evil God and is displeased with us. As Homer Sampson said, if we choose the wrong God, we're just making the true God matter or matter. Fifth, what if the true God is good rather than evil like Yahweh? What if it wants us to actually be good? I would assume that that's what a good God would want, wouldn't you? So by following the wicked Yahweh, we become wicked and cannot please any good God that might exist. Six, when Christians proudly trot out Pascal's wager, they're telling us more than they want us to know. They're, they're telling us that we, they've run out of anything better to say. They're saying, okay, no, we can't prove our God, but just in case, let's wager on him. They're admitting that they have no evidence for their God. They're coming from a place of weakness. They really shouldn't have this wager in their arsenal. It doesn't look good on them. They might as well tell us just to choose to believe in Santa Claus. That that way we'll get presents and not just a lump of coal. Santa's gifts not be, might not be as good as Yahweh's promises, but his punishments are not as bad as what Yahweh threatens either. I mean, unless that coal in the stocking is a hint that we'll be burnt if we don't believe in Santa and be obedient little boys and girls. When Christians have to resort to Pascal's wager, they might as well pack it in. The bottom line is, there is a God, or gods, or there isn't. And either the God or gods care what we do, or they don't. If I choose to wager that gods exist, I'm also going to wager, wager that they're good. Otherwise, I have no idea how to please them, nor do I care to. And let me tell you something. Goodness is not murdering babies. Goodness is not misogyny. Goodness is not human trafficking. Goodness is not rejoicing in human sacrifice and glorying in the cross, a torture device. Those acts are not good. They are all evil. A Christian man once asked me, Even if Yahweh is evil, don't you think you should obey him? Well, think about that. Even if an overlord is evil, you should do the evil he tells you to do and approve of his evil deeds so that he's not evil to you and instead rewards you for your evil. That's crazy, y'all. You might as well worship Satan because he can give you things too. Sure, it's only in this life, but that's neither here nor there as far as whether it's good and moral to worship a God just to get things or not to be punished. Besides, Satan is a whole lot more moral than Yahweh is. It doesn't matter whether the God of the Bible is real. He's evil. The wager is about guessing whether there's an evil being who wants something from you and deciding to pretend the being exists and then obeying it, praising it, and doing its evil bidding in order to save your own hide. It's giving up your integrity for a mansion you hope, without evidence, is real and giving up your own desires in life and maybe even giving up your own children if they don't follow your God too. 
Pascal's wager is stupid. It makes absolutely no sense. We cannot choose to believe some we don't have good evidence for. The God Pascal was wagering on is not the only God, and we would need to, you know, that we would need to wager on. And we will be wagering on an evil God, a proven of his evil deeds, and thus be evil ourselves. Meanwhile, possibly risking the displeasure of an actual good God. In my opinion, the best wager is that if a God exists, it wants us to use our brains to do all the good we can do. So let's just do that. Thank you all. Bye.